I'm sure at some point you've used an image magic script to do some sort of image processing, whether that's, you know, writing the command yourself, or you download a script off of GitHub that uses image magic to do something for you. But did you know that image magic comes with far more than just the image processing part? You can even do things like take screenshots, and that's what we're doing today. Now, the utility we're working with today is called import, and when you download the image magic package, this is one of the binaries you're going to get. So, import isn't really the most, I guess, user-friendly screenshotting tool. Not to say that it doesn't do everything a screenshotting tool really needs to do, but if you want something that's dead simple to work with, I would say something like MAME probably is a much better choice. But if you're someone who likes to have the smallest possible number of packages installed, and you don't want to have multiple things installed to do the exact same job, trying this out might be a really good idea. Now just taking a screenshot, but this is very simple. So we run the import command, and then pass in the file name for where we want to save it. So let's say test.png. This is going to let us select a region. So let's say I want to take a picture of the Arch logo right here. Select that region. And then let's open that up in SXIV, so test.png. And there we go, that's that screenshot. Now, one thing to note is the file extension is very, very important. So if you save it as a JPEG, it is actually going to take the screenshot as a JPEG, not as a PNG. So just keep that in mind, because if you don't include an extension, so let's say we take another screenshot like this, and let's go into LF, uh, not LG, LF, Go down to test, and as we can see, it has actually taken the screenshot, but you're not actually going to be able to open it up in most image programs. Now, sometimes you don't want to take a picture of a region, sometimes you want to take a picture of an entire window. So, one way you can go and do that is with the import dash window option, and then you have to pass in the ID of the window. So Let's say we want to get the ID of the focused window. One way we can go and do that is with a program called XDO Tool. Now, XDO Tool isn't actually a part of Image Magic, so if you do want to use this, you will have to go and download it separately. But if we go and run the dash window option with this right here, so XDO Tool Get Window Focus, that will get us the ID of this window right here. And we're going to save the image as test1.png. So let's go and run that. And SXIV test1.png. As we can see, that screenshot of that window. Now, one thing you might notice is the compositor isn't actually working. I've noticed that when you use the window command on one focused window, it does ignore the compositor. The compositor does work perfectly fine, though, if you're just screenshotting a region. Another way we can use the window option is to take a screenshot of our entire X server, and that's basically a screenshot of all of our monitors. So, dash window, and then if we pass in root, root basically just means the X server itself. And then let's give it the name test2.png, and then let's go give that a second to actually take the screenshot. Sometimes the screenshots are a little bit slow with import. That's one of the only problems I have noticed with this test2.png and as we can see that's all of my monitors. Now when it comes to screenshotting a monitor I don't know of a convenient way to do it directly with the import window option. There are ways you can get an ID for the monitor with the XDO tool but I don't know of an easy way to write it as a one-liner. A better way we can go and do this though is by just cropping the screenshot. So what we can do is import dash window and if we take a screenshot of the root and then use the dash crop option. And the way this works is we go width by height. So in my case, 1920 by 1080. All of my monitors are 1080p. And then what we need to do is set the X offset. So I want to take a screenshot of my middle monitor. So to actually take a screenshot of that one, I have to start the crop from after my left-hand monitor has ended. So in this case, my offset is going to be plus 1920. And then my Y offset doesn't need to change. So this one is going to be plus zero. And I forgot to set a name, so test3.png, and give that a second. And as we can see, it's screenshot of this monitor right here. Now, if I wanted to take a screenshot of, say, my left-hand monitor, what I would do is just set that offset to zero, and then take 1920 by 1080 from that point there. As we can see, that's my recording screen. Now, most of the cropping is done from the top left-hand corner, like most other applications, but it doesn't actually have to be like that. What we can go and do is actually change the cropping gravity. So once again, we'll take another screenshot and then pass in the dash gravity option. And in this case, top left is going to be called northwest. 
So we're going to set it to northeast. And let's take another crop. So dash crop 1920 by 1080. And then plus 1920 plus zero. This once again is going to take a screenshot of our main monitor. But instead of starting from this side here, it's going to start from this side over here. Take a screenshot, include the name. As you can see, that's a screenshot of my middle monitor again. Now, ultimately, the screenshot in gravity doesn't actually matter. The exact same result can be achieved regardless of what you're using. Now, sometimes you want to take more than one screenshot. And the way we do that is with the snaps option. So import dash snaps. And let's say we want to take three screenshots, for example, and let's give them the name test.png. So what it's going to do with this is go and append a number to the end of the name. So let's take a screenshot of this right here. This right here, and I don't know, this bit right here. And let's go into LF, and if we go all the way down to those test images, as you can see, test 0, test 1, test 2. So 0 is that one there, test 1 is that one there, and test 2 is that one there. Sometimes you might want to take a screenshot with a delay. Sadly, there's no built-in way to actually do this, but you're on a Linux system anyway, so just go and run the sleep command. So let's say sleep 3... And after that's done, import, uh, let's just call it test.png this time. So after three seconds, it's going to try to take a screenshot. And there we go, take a screenshot of that. And if we go into uh, SXIV test.png, it's taken the screenshot. Really, you don't actually need a built-in way to do a delay. You have the sleep utility, you might as well go use it. Now, if for whatever reason, when you take a screenshot, you want to apply an effect to the image, when you're running import like this, you don't actually have access to the full array of image magic commands. You can obviously make a tool chain, take the screenshot, and then run a command afterwards, but there are some things we can go and do with import directly. One of those things we can do is negating the image. So let's say test1.png, and then dash, actually I think we have to include that before the name. So dash negate. And this obviously is going to negate the colors. So let's go and take all of that. And then it's going to take slightly longer, obviously, because it has to apply an effect. So test 1.png. Now the image is negated. I'm not sure when you'd ever need to do that. Same with taking things like a monochrome image. It is a feature here. I might as well mention it. Yeah, it's, it's a monochrome image. We know what monochrome looks like. Another thing you can go and do is take a screenshot and then modify the size of it. So let's say you want a screenshot, but you only want it to be at 25% of the resolution. I don't know when you might want to do this. Maybe if you're trying to send it to someone with a, I guess like a really slow connection, but then they can just wait longer to download the image and send them the proper resolution. But the option is here if you do need to do it for whatever reason. I haven't tried it out, but you might be able to go and increase the size above 100%. I presume it's just going to try to, I guess, upscale the image. Let's say 200% and take a screenshot of this bit right here. And let's try see what it actually does. I actually have no idea. Yeah, it seems like it just increases the size up to 200%. We can also take a screenshot and rotate it. So let's say we rotate it by 45, for example, and... Basically, it's going to be rotated on a 45 degree angle. So test 1.png. You'd never want to actually do this, but it's an option there if you need it for whatever reason. Now, one that might be kind of useful is setting a color in an image transparent. So the way we do that is with the transparent option. So let's say I want to take a screenshot of my file manager off to the right hand side here. What I'm going to need to do is actually get the color I want to set transparent. In this case, I'm going to set the light gray bar up the top here transparent. So that color is that one right there. That was being done with a separate utility on my system, not with image magic. So let's go and set the file name to file manager, spell it correctly, .png, and take that picture right there. And if I open that up in SXIV now, uh, file manager.png. That is now the color of the SXIV background. I've always thought that Image Magic is a really cool utility that most of the time I really have no reason to actually use, but when it comes to screenshotting with it, this actually gives it a use case I might want to try out. Personally, though, on my system, I mainly do things with Flameshot, and Flameshot is so much more powerful. 
maybe powerful is not the correct word. It's so much more user friendly. It makes it very easy to do things like, say, highlighting things and adding text. While you can go and add text with import, I didn't show you that. It's not really the best text tool. And because you're doing it from the command line, you sort of have to guess where the text needs to be located. So I think that's going to be everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Monster, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Peter, the Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, them links down below to all of my things. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.